Proverbs 25, 28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken and left without walls. How we react when the pressure is on matters. Today on Better Together, let's join Victoria Osteen, Brittany Borders, Jeannie Munsey, Beth Redman, and Katherine Scott for a conversation on how to choose self-control. We need to talk about this. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I just recently found myself in a group chat that I did not want to be in. And um, there was a dispute going on. I think they wanted to add, just add some people for support. So first of all, I wasn't supposed to be there. I found myself there. Mm. And then, you know, when you see like the dots going, we were like, oh no, oh no, it's go- <laughs> this is not going good. And I could just feel, it was like a pan on a stove mm. is how I felt inside. And I felt really angry. And is that always a bad thing? No, but it's about how I respond. And I could feel, here's here's a line in the sand. Am I gonna cross it and actually not use self-control? Or am I gonna stay behind it? And I'm telling you, it was a battle. It was like internally sitting on my hands. And I had so much I wanted to say and defend people. Well, first of all, I was the oldest person in the group. So I shouldn't even be having this conversation with myself. I should know better. But I just felt from the Lord, just this simplicity of Beth, is this your business? Is this your battle? And the answer to both of those was no. But I couldn't quite find the self-control on my own. I couldn't think myself into that place because like I say, I was the pan. Um, And I thought, well, you know what? I didn't get saved on my own. And I'm not going to be displaying the fruit of the Spirit on my own in this moment. And I literally had to call on the Lord for help and say, will you help me to resist and show restraint? And I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but that's not my natural personality. You know, I've got a lot of things to say. I like to process. And if I'd have done that, the Proverbs tells us that reckless words, what do they do? They're like an arrow. They would pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. But because I felt like the Lord said, this isn't your business, this is not your battle, there wasn't even anything that I needed to add. So I thought, well, I could either be passive aggressive and like leave this conversation. (laughs) Have you ever done that? I was like, that wouldn't be mature either. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to have to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And I surprised myself how hard it actually was. But the next day I thought, oh my goodness, I didn't have to say sorry for anything. I didn't have to take anything back. I didn't have to rebuild the relationship. And do you know what? Because nobody responded. There was nothing to actually have to fix. And I thought, God is so kind. Sometimes we just need to ask ourselves those simple questions. Is this my business? Is this my battle? Can I actually deal with this in my own strength? No, I cannot. I need to ask the Holy Spirit to help me have self-control. I like that. Business and battle. Yeah. I like that. So how would you respond if it was your business and it was your battle? How can you practice yeah. self-control? That's a good question. Well, yeah. tell you what, I wouldn't do it in a group chat. No. Uh, I wouldn't do it. I would, if that person was not in the location, I would call them right away and say, hey, you're upset. How can I help you? Mm-hmm. Not going in on the defense. And I found every time I've done that, the relationship has been restored and been intact. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they live near me, I say, hey, do you want to get together? Because it's interesting how you can build up a profile. But when you look in someone's eyes at the end of the yeah. day, you know you love that person and you know who they are. And so I think sometimes actually going straight to the person and stepping out of the crowd. And I think that's why I have such an aversion to anything group orientated. I'm like, I don't yeah. know how much good yeah. happens there. So often it can become a tribe thing, can't it? It can become, or two camps. You're like, that is just not the heart of the Lord. And I love what you said, Beth, you're absolutely right. When you see people face to face again, you're not taking a position anymore on something. You're actually bringing a heart posture towards somebody. And it just really helps. It helps you think clearer. It helps things get sorted out properly for what they really are, rather than this thing that it can become. I actually really think as well, just especially in in this day and age, we've sort of lost the art of respectful disagreement as well. Mm. You can't, if you start aligning with camps, there's no room for hearts to be touched or bridges to be built. It just becomes more and more polarizing. And I, I love that self-control will lead us every time uh, to that place of, building a bridge towards each other yeah. again and 
it's so much richer, isn't it? Yeah, because it's asking yourself, what's the end goal? Like, before you respond, asking yourself, what do I want to come from this? What does God want to come, you know, from out of this situation? And how can we bridge the gap? And I think when we ask ourselves those questions, sometimes that'll help us respond with self-control regardless of how difficult, you know, it is. Because I know I do not like group chats. Like, I am the first to be like, leave. (laughs) (laughs) Before the conversation even gets started, I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it today. (laughs) I would not put myself in a position to have to force myself to, you know, operate in self-control. I'm like, not today, guys. (laughs) But, um... No, I, I think I think that's great. Like that is one of the things that I have to work on because I am quick. Like sometimes I feel like everything deserves a response and God is like, no, yeah. everything doesn't, you know, require a response. And a lot of times we feel like we have to fight our own battles and God told us that he would fight our battles for us. All we have to do is be quiet. Yeah. We remain in peace, and I've seen that time and time and time again. And when when you continue to see that, it's a little easier to walk in self control, whether it's your battle or not. Because injustice, I am big on that, so I will fight somebody else's battle just like it's mine. And they're like, "You don't have anything to do with this." I'm like, "I know, but I feel you, girl." So, um, but to remind yourself that you know, God will fight my battles, like that God will stand before me. All I have to do is remain calm and silent and just trust him. And it's actually easier to operate in self-control than people, you know, believe. Yes. uh, You know, self-control in our own lives, uh, when we're having to use self-control, it's not really about denial, but it's really about what it develops in us when we... Um, allow self-control to be at the forefront and and it's self-control. And um, so you have to let the Holy Spirit rise up within you when you want to say or to do something because um, if you need to hold your peace, then it's about the development that begins to happen inside of you. And we don't often recognize that, but if we can become more self-controlled, then... Uh, the environment can change, you know, whether it's with our words or with our actions, we want to rebuttal. If we've been uh, offended, you know, uh, we, we want to come back and deal with it. If we're insecure, sometimes uh, we become defensive. And we want to deal, deal with that based out of our own insecurities. And so when you develop that, when, or when you use self-control and the development process ha- happens, that allows room for the fruit of the Spirit to really work in your life, which is what is supposed to be happening. Mm-hmm. You know, again. One time Joel was talking, this man was came up and he was talking and he and Joel were talking and I wasn't in the conversation, I'm just standing there and the guy's just going off, like he's giving his opinion about this, his opinion about that and Joel's just listening to him and he's on and on and on and finally uh, he, he left and I looked at Joel and I was like, did you agree with everything that he was saying? I mean, he was like, and he was like, no. And I was like, well, you didn't say anything. And this was years ago. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell him? And he's, he looked at me and I'll never forget this. He said, Victoria, I wasn't put on this earth to straighten everybody out. Wow. And I just, that made such a huge difference to me. Yeah. It's like, well, right, I wasn't put here to straighten everybody out. And it really was a great lesson for me because, you know, you immediately, you want to go, well, that's not necessarily true because, yes, yes. you know, but when he said that to me, it was just, it was a real moment for me that I've never forgotten. And so I've learned now, if you're talking to someone who goes off or is, dis, you know, just saying things that may, maybe it's a friend or an uncle or a family member, you're going to the Christmas party and you know they're going to get under your skin anyway. Yeah, yeah. I've learned to just have a few pat answers. You know, like if someone is pressing you for a, an opinion about something, you know, I've just learned to just say stuff like, you know, that is so interesting. I have to think about that. Yeah. Or That's just, so you know, just to rehearse a few yeah. pat answers helps us to just pause a minute and we're not left empty. We're not left, 
you know, like just, just, you know, struggling with what we're going to say. We kind of already know, okay, that's fine. I don't have to have an answer for everything, you know, and, and just that's what I've found helps me a lot and helps me it, with self-control because it's true. I mean, we, we weren't here to straighten everybody out. And you know what? Sometimes time is all you need. Yes. You and know, at the dinner table, they'll, we've got five kids. Yes. There's a, a lot of opinions. <laughs> and I'm trying to teach them just because someone feels that strongly, you don't have to tell them they're wrong. You can no. just let you say, listen, maturity is realizing how many things don't require your comment. Mm -hmm. And if someone's upset or feels strongly, you actually protesting, what's it going to do? It's going to stir them up. Mm -hmm. and the Bible says actually a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not motivated in love. But actually, a gentle answer can turn away wrath. And that person having strong feelings, just letting them have those feelings, letting them be out there, not needing to change them. But I'm trying to teach my kids self-control, but actually, I need to take them to the source because I can't just walk past the gym. That doesn't make me fit. Right. Just being near the gym. I wish right. it did. You know, just, you know, <laughs> nice. just talking about self-control does not make me more self-control. No. It's teaching my kids, we've got to go to the source. I don't know about you, but... I am not naturally a calm, measured person. My husband is. And so often I, we read about wisdom being, you know, partnered with prudence and self-control. Mm -hmm. And prudence is that ability to basically sleep on it. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you just love to be that person? I want to be that person who can just, doesn't need to react, mm -hmm. doesn't need to, can just sleep on it, can just be measured, can just act with caution. Mm -hmm. um, and teaching my kids just to go to the source. If you are finding yourself fired up, stirred up, angry, angry is an, a valid emotion, mm -hmm. but actually sleeping on it and saying, Jesus, help me to respond in a righteous, right way. Mm -hmm. And then there's no damage behind you. There's no strife that, you know, you're, you're calm in the storm, not stirring it up. Well, yeah, that's yeah. what you're putting in you too, when you think about it. Yeah. Sure. What are you listening to if there's, if you're letting things build up in you, you know, where you are like a firecracker, just waiting for somebody to light that fuse, you know? So, I mean, that's something like you say, to really think about too, what is stirring you up? What gets you riled up, you know? And so I, I think that's what we put in usually comes out. And I actually so, think as well, this, it's a little bit about the way that you're wired to, you know, and you're saying, if you're a firecracker, there are others who really struggle to come to the table ever. We have a natural inclination, whatever way we happen to be wired. And sometimes that self-control is just taking control of our inners <laughs> and saying, okay, I, this for me looks like actually stepping up. That's a great way to think. And, you know, and we're all wired so differently. But sometimes that not speaking, this is where, if that's where you're inclined to be, sometimes it's the Lord saying, now I have put a voice in you for a reason. It's time to use it. And you don't have to do that. Of course, if you're, if you're kind of quiet anyway, you're probably not going to do that in a very stirred up sort of a way. But it's so important that people hear your voice. And it's so important when the Lord is nudging you to do that. Just as important as not letting people hear your voice when the Lord's like, <clears throat> thank you very much for your service. <laughs> Be quiet. Yeah. It's like... Uh, it's, uh, it works both ways, but the, just this is analogy. So at nighttime, you're tired, you go to the refrigerator and you open the refrigerator door and you look inside mm -hmm. and you think, you know, I, I, I think I want something to eat. And so you keep looking, but if, if you allow self-control, now this is in the natural, but there's a spiritual analogy to this. You just close and the refrigerator the door. <laughs> in the natural. Well, like, well I had a spiritual yeah. analogy, then I happen to think, well, this actually is a natural issue that I find myself dealing with, is just close that refrigerator door, go get in the bed and go to sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you won't have felt like you missed anything. Absolutely. And so as we take with our words, we want to say something. And if we'll just hold back, it is, it's like going to the refrigerator. It's like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to resist this, as it were. I'm going to use self-control, and I'm just going to go to bed. So in, in the spiritual, you resist it, you sleep on it. Most of the time when you wake up, you, you have a different perspective. Yes. Yes. Mentally, your mind is in a different place. You know, it's like they say, and I'm probably off on a rabbit trail here, but they say you, are, you can only make so many decisions a day. And then at some point, 
uh, uh, psychologists say that at some point your mind you just refuses to make more decisions. So depends what time of the day it is. If you're at the end of the day and you've got five kids and they've been on your last nerve, then it Bad might time. be harder to have self <laughs> yeah. self con- <laughs> self control. You know, uh, but so it depends where you're at emotionally too, uh, where you have more strength than others. But if you can uh, learn that, the more you can learn to be self controlled. I think the greater freedom that you have, and it is, it's a battle that you win and uh, you get better with it the more you do it. And the wise don't grow wiser by speaking. The book of Proverbs said, the wise grow wiser by listening. So actually less is more. In fact, the Bible says when words are many, sin is not absent. And actually learning, you know, if I'm going to grow in self-control, I've got to abide. That's where I'm, I'm going to be in the word. And actually I've got to learn to listen way more than I speak. That's so good even with raising your children. You know, we talked earlier about, you know, giving correction, but sometimes I know that raising my children, I would make every moment a teaching moment. (laughs) You know, every little thing was, oh, this is a good teaching moment, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And so it's, it's like, you know, there is a point where it's like every moment doesn't have to be a teaching moment. You know, it can be. It can be addressed later. It can be brought up there. Maybe it's a be- you'll have better ears to hear it later. But I think, I think too, that sometimes we need to watch our words and not always have something to say about something. Yes. No, you know? that, that is so true because that is one of the things that I told my mom because she is, she is a, t- God knows I love her greatly because she is a teacher. Like she will to teach us about self-control with our words, she took us out on the deck and she had, she blew bubbles. And she was like, these are your words, these are your actions, you know, and she's blowing bubbles. She was like, no, try to catch them. And so we were trying to catch them and they were just popping in our hands. They were just popping in our hands. She was like, you see that? She was like, no, you're gonna hear a lot about grace and grace is awesome. She was like, but if you can pause and use wisdom with, before you blow the bubble, You know, you won't have to try to catch something that you'll never be able to get back. Like, you may be able to try to make it better with the person, but you pop something in them that you may have a hard time, you know, getting back. So practice using self-control before you blow the bubble. And when I tell you every single thing growing up was like (laughs) that, like she wanted to be the one to correct everything. And as a mom, I began to do that and I had to pause and I just kind of had to listen to Holy Spirit. And he's like, you're trying to do a lot of my job as well. You don't have to be the one who teaches them every single lesson. Like you're here to guide them and you're here to point them in the direction that I have them, you know, that I want them to go in. But you don't have to be the person to correct every single thing. So sometimes when I see something and I'm like itching, I'm like, but God is like, you keep your mouth shut. I'm like, but what I found, they hear me more when I do speak to correct them because I'm not trying to correct every single thing. The thing that matters the most when I speak, they stop and they listen. And they're, they're so in tune because it's like, they haven't turned a deaf ear to you always teaching a lesson, yeah. you know? And because of that, it has allowed me to have a relationship with them where they're like, so what you think about what you're asking me? <laughs> this is awesome. Like, okay, we're all to a good start. Keep this through your teenage years, <laughs> you know? But um, that's one thing that I had to learn. Like, I don't have to be the one to teach every single lesson. I have to use self-control. And from that, you know, God can do great things. Yes, you really yeah. can. We haven't talked much about social media yet, mm-hmm. but this is a place where self-control is so needed, not yeah. just amongst believers, but amongst humanity. Yeah. And someone posting something and then there's just this invitation where we live in a generation of, well, I get to speak my truth. My truth is important. I just need to be honest and go 
rushing in, yeah. writing anything, and you've seen those threads, and it's like 4,000 comments. Oh, you know, well. you can just get a bowl of popcorn and just spend the night looking at this situation that's unraveled, <laughs> that has, it's just full of strife. There's nothing good there. It's fighting, it's disagreement. Um, and Proverbs 25, 28 talks about a person without self-control is like a city with a wall that's Without broken walls, down. Yes. And basically what that means is there's a gap for the enemy to come in. And when you're not showing self-control, you're opening a door to the enemy. So it's not just so important for our own lives, but it's actually important for our protection. Yes. So that actually we are fortified cities, that, that self-control protects us, especially on social media, that we're not inviting strife into our lives. Yes, well, getting off social media and or uh, turning off the news, because we're not in a place where we're, we're called to influence it. You influence the place that God put you in. And so sometimes we get so caught up in all of that and it's not in us to bring the influence and we get ourselves all worked up. And so sometimes we just have to step out of it and just not get involved in it. And it takes as much self-control to do yes, that it really does. as it does to get involved yeah. in something. Sometimes the world just does not need our opinion on something. And it's, it takes everything in us not to share <laughs> our opinion. Yeah. And I think as well, sometimes you, you are so, you're convinced of a thing and then you see another angle or you hear another story or something and, and your opinion shifts entirely. And you're like, wow, this is almost like emotion. This yeah. flits and changes and I need to be careful how strongly I present my opinion about things mm. um, because I might actually have changed my mind in a day or two and whose heart have I crushed along the way mm. and for what? Yeah. It, it didn't help bring them closer to the Lord yeah. and it, didn't, it certainly didn't help bring me closer to the Lord. Mm. It's just so helpful as well to have friends, husband, whoever it is, just speaking into your heart as well and saying that he, in a way that really resonates with you where you realize, oh, I'm stepping into territory here that actually I, I wasn't designed for. I remember just thinking about having kids. Uh, whenever, whenever my kids were little, I have two girls, one of whom will be 20 years old tomorrow. I can't even believe it. I'm glad I'm sitting down to say that. I can't even believe it. But um, sometimes those two wee gorgeous girls would just nip, 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 nip at each other and everything in me. <laughs> I'm going to do something bad. And then, and as I'm standing there thinking, I'm about to lose my mind, I would hear this crazy woman shouting and going totally bonkers and realizing, oh, it's me. I have erupted. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember it only happened a few times. And I remember Alan coming into the kitchen one time and he just looked me straight in the eye and he just said, this is not who you are. And it, it was like a light switch went on. I'm so thankful, but it's that opinion thing. It's that I, everything in me is so annoyed by what's right in front of me and what's going on right now. And, and I wanna have self-control and I've given everything I can to it, but here I've been overtaken by this moment. And I actually, I just really wanna encourage anybody listening, you're like, yes, I have had great self-control and I just keep I just keep messing it up. And I just feel like the Lord would say to you, this is not who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are. I've put my spirit in you. And you get to, even if you feel like you've totally screwed up, you get to move beyond this part and step into who I've actually called you to be. That's it. And this gets to be a conversation of hope. Because yeah. just how this isn't my natural root shade, let's just keep it real. Yeah. You know, self-control might not be my natural bent, but it's the character of God. And because we know Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Actually, the more we press in, this might be an area we think, God, I wanna be more like you. We can be more like yes. him because of the fruit of the Spirit. So why don't we just pray now? And people are listening, thinking, oh my goodness, I've blown it. I've come to the cross, come to Jesus, repent and turn. And let's just pray now. Jesus, I just thank you so much for who you are. God, I thank you that you're a forgiving God. You're a kind God. You're a God of peace and self-control. And just pray for anyone listening, for me too, Jesus, that we would come to you and be changed by your nature. Thank you, Jesus, for the fruit of the Spirit that can flow through us and show who you are, Jesus, because of your grace and your goodness. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.